Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here at Justin's Fish Room and as promised today we're going to be doing a BBS video. It's a bit of a how-to tutorial but I also want to show you a few things that uh, I've kind of found on the way um, that just come with doing this plenty of times. Uh, things to reduce the, the cost of keeping BBS but also um, things that are just handy to know like prolonging the life of BBS so you don't have to keep on making it every single day. So let's jump straight into this video. Um, I'm glad you're here. Welcome if you haven't been to this channel before. Uh, we're a great community here at Justin's Fish Room and um, I hope you feel welcome. And please leave a comment down in the comments down below. I love to talk to you guys. So as you guys know, uh, BBS is extremely important for uh, keeping fry. <laughs> um, so keeping fry is one thing, but feeding fry is a whole nother thing. And with rams, it's particularly hard to uh, do either. So welcome to the hard world of keeping rams. It's crazy, fun, and very frustrating. But, so as you can see, this tank here is completely full. Well, you probably can't see, but there are a lot of ram fry in here. And I'll just there are a heap of ram fry in here that you probably saw from the last video. A nice clean container because um, we did a huge clean in that video, which was great. And yeah, they're all looking healthy. See some really nice dark ones in there. That's good. But essentially, um, we want to make it as simple as possible for ourselves as keepers and breeders um, because it's already pretty tricky as it is. So. I'm going to show you A, how to refrigerate your BBS, um, and then B, I'm going to show you how I personally do my hatching setup um, and what I use to try and reduce the cost. So let's get into it, and I'm very excited to do this video. Alrighty, so as you can see, smack bang in between two of my uh, breeding tanks is a jug full of BBS that's been in here for 48 hours. It's been a last two nights have been quite cold so they've taken 48 hours to fully hatch but they're ready so you can see um, essentially I've got my air hose coming in I just have an air stone in there um, and you need air as you can see to keep the eggs constantly moving if they're not constantly moving they're not gonna have as good of a hatch rate um, don't ask me why uh, that's just something that's commonly known I guess they just need to be moving to help them hatch. I don't know, if you know, put a comment down below. I'd love to know why. Um, but yeah, so this is the basic setup and we're gonna go through harvesting these and basically what I do to keep them alive for a week. So let's do this. Alrighty, so first things first, you guys have seen this jug in my previous video. This is the handiest thing in my whole fish room. Well, actually, this is the handiest thing in my whole fish room. This is the second handiest. Um, but essentially what we're going to use this for is to hold my plastic bag. So the second thing we're going to need, wait one sec, is a plastic bag. And these you can get from your local fish store. You can also buy them online uh, on eBay for really cheap. Um, you only need one for this. And I just put it in the jug to hold it because I don't have anyone here to help me. So. I just do that and basically I just pour it into the bag and then we'll go from there. So I'll show you what that is, what that looks like in a sec. Alrighty, so here's my jug. I folded the uh, bag ends down so it doesn't get in the way when I'm pouring and simply just pour the whole thing. into the jug. So here it is. So now we have our BBS in the plastic bag. So now you're probably freaking out, uh, some of you, about the eggs. Um, these, these eggs, when you feed them to rams, I find it easier to just leave them with the BBS, put them in. My ram fry don't eat eggs, eggshells. So a lot of people say theirs eat eggshells, but I've never had that experience. I guess as long as they have moving BBS, uh, they'll go for that over the eggs. But 
basically what I do is because I do water changes every day, um, I just take the eggs out and you know, good as new. So um, yeah, so the eggs aren't a big problem. Um, and yeah, so the next thing is we're gonna roll this up and squish all the air out. And yeah, you're probably questioning why I'm doing that, but you grip the end almost like a ponytail with a little bit of plastic on the end. So. And then, I mean, this part is optional. You can just use the ambient air, um, but we're gonna use oxygen to prolong their life for that full week. Without oxygen, they'll probably last for about four days. So let's go ahead and put some oxygen in this bag. Alrighty, so I've just attached uh, like a old tubing from a canister filter onto the outlet of this. Squeeze all the air out. And then, just like you would at a pet shop, just blow it up. And because you've squeezed it, you can take the hose off, make sure that's off. And then, just twist. And I feel like this is a double whammy video because I'm showing you how to bag fish as well. But um, this is all I do. And so the point of doing this, for those of you who don't know, um, we're trying to create an internal uh, pressure. So trying to get all of that air, all of the oxygen in the air, inside the bag to be pressed down into the water with something called Le Chatelier's Principle. And it sounds really complicated. It was just a French guy who was smart and had really good ideas about atmospheric pressure. So don't worry about that. Essentially, Le Chatelier's principle means if we increase the pressure in the air, it's going to force the air into the water. So that's what we're trying to do. Same principle as with your LFS. So now I need two elastic bands. Um, one I found, unless you've got really strong elastic bands, may break. Um, so I just do two just in case. So let's go and get those elastic bands and we'll tie it. Alrighty, so I've got three here. And what I do is I just grab the little twisted end and fold it in half. Then make a little figure eight, close the half, and then go around the base. Then twist, go around the base. Okay, and then I'm gonna twist as, so you're pulling the elastic band down, so you're increasing that pressure with every twist. And then you have a little loop to then fold this over. Cool. And that's the same technique I use for shipping fish um, around Australia, except I double bag them and put way more rubber bands on than this um, and a bunch of other things. So there we have it. Now all I need to do is refrigerate this and this will last for a week. So it's, it's pretty handy to know because I know a lot of people who have to have a hatchery going 24 seven. So they always have at least two actually because in case one fails. And so they keep on going. But this way I can go maybe one or two days without needing to do my hatchery. But I've always got an abundant supply on standby and having a fish room, you actually can't get enough of this stuff because not only the babies are eating it, it's the adults getting ready to spawn with it. There's shrimp in my fish room. There's even like owl number plecos that eat this stuff. So it's so good. It's like the krill of the ocean. So I would make sure that you guys use this method if you do have a larger setup or if you just don't have time to keep on doing these uh, brine shrimp hatcheries 24 seven. Um, alrighty, so now I'm gonna show you the cheap way of hatching brine shrimp. Alrighty, so first of all, the brands that I use. So it's actually quite simple uh, what I do. I have two different types, so two different, um, I guess you call them species, I don't really know if they are separate species, but they're from different parts of uh, the earth, um, and they are different in size. So first of all, I use Ocean Nutrition, uh, not sponsored at all. Uh, this is really good. It is quite expensive though, Ocean Nutrition uh, Artemia eggs, but they are the really tiny, tiny uh, species of brine shrimp. Uh, that you get to hatch and I use these guys I always have a backup of them for the first week of ram fry growing out 
because they can't eat anything bigger than this. And this is really, really great stuff. Um, and the second brand I use, I don't really know the name of the brand, but basically it's this tin. Again, I'm not sponsored by these guys. I've started hatching these out. They do take longer to hatch out and they are like probably triple the size of the other ones. But these are the ones that I use to feed the adults. Um, also feed the, the older uh, fry and juveniles right up until they get to a sellable size. So it's about being strategic with what you're feeding. Because if I fed this stuff uh, to all my fish, it would get way too expensive. Um, and it would just be very, very, I don't know, it would be non-economical and non-practical because they're so small. Whereas these guys have a lot more nutrition in them. And yeah, it's just, it's a lot better. So I think with these guys, 60% of their biomass is actually protein, which is really cool. Um, and yeah, so they're really, really good. I'm going to go ahead and do these guys uh, today because I don't have any brand new fry. Uh, this tank and that tank and that tank. Um, there's a few spawning behaviors going on, so I might have it in probably like a week or two, but nothing to worry about right now. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do this. Alrighty, pool salt. So I know you guys are thinking there's additives or something in pool salt and you can't use it. It's not true. There's actually, if you look at the ingredients, it's pure ocean salt in this bag. And I even made sure and I double checked and I triple checked. And this is $7.98, so eight bucks, eight Australian dollars for this whole 20 kilo bag of salt as opposed to something that I was using before, which is this aquarium salt that was $22 for a small one. And I think this was like $33 or something like that. So I was really like, I don't know, throwing away a lot of money, um, especially with such a big fish room. This is the best thing to use. I have got a Stanley knife. So if you do have parents, I recommend you use your parents' uh, help for this. But essentially you just open up um, just a corner and then you just get a scoop and scoop in one teaspoon uh, per liter really that's that's all it needs uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now teaspoon right. oh should have cut a bigger hole but okay that's one and I might just do a little bit more Alright, so maybe what's best is two teaspoons of salt. Um, I didn't realize how small the hole was that I cut into the bag, so it kept on um, taking some off. But yeah, that should be good. And what I'm going to do now is go to the tap and put just pure tap water in. Um, no RO, just, I don't know, metropolitan water, I guess. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we're at the sink, and I'm just going to go ahead and... So there are a few residual eggs in here and I probably should have cleaned it out, but the main thing is that we get that salt dissolved as soon as possible. So let's go. Alrighty, so our jug, air stone, and I'm just gonna put that in. And I just have a peg there just to stop it from going in more because when they start hatching, they get stuck in the hose if there's too much hose in there. But um, essentially I just let that go for a while. And I recommend like, one thing I didn't do that is probably easier to do is to put the eggs in with the salt, then put the water, because then it starts the process of getting the eggs to what I call stick to the water. Um, if you guys have done this before, you'd know that the eggs get really stuck to the sides initially, and you have to keep on using a teaspoon or a pipette to wash them into the water before they stick in the water. So that's just something that you could probably do that I haven't done here, and I usually do that. Alrighty, so I'm going to add the eggs now, um, and yeah, it'll be good. So I'm just going to add... Okay. 
about that much egg into the water. And I'm just going to stir it just to make sure that it sticks a little bit easier and so I don't have to keep on washing the eggs off the side as much. But you can see there's already clumps of egg. And so I'm just going to keep on stirring it. Creating a bit of a vortex just to get it to sit in. And then there might be some eggs on the lip. And so there you have it. And then I just close that. And then this needs to go back into the refrigerator and then it can be used again in a few days time. Alright everyone, so thank you so much for joining us on today's video all about BBS and essentially making uh, ram breeders and fish breeders lives a little bit easier. Um, it is very very hot and I really apologize for looking very sweaty. Um, and my skin's kind of been a little bit weird with wearing a mask so much, so apologize for that, but I hope you really enjoyed this video, I hope it was informative for you, I hope you learned something new, and if you haven't done so already, please consider liking and subscribing, becoming a part of the community here at Justin's Fish Room, and yeah, just leave a comment, say good day, and I will definitely get back to you, so awesome. Alright guys, happy fish keeping! <laughs>